welcome to JPad Tuning. In 45 seconds, can you give a little introduction into yourself, who you are, what you do? I'll do my best. I'm going to like start the little timer because I will go on forever. But um, I'm Laura and I own the company 230 Intensives. I am a dance coach, a cheer coach. Um, we offer technique workshops, choreography intensives, you name it, we do it. And uh, I'm also a competition judge and um, choreographer. And yeah, all things cheer and dance, basically. Love it. Blimey, so you are you're keeping yourself busy then? All the time. I think oh, yeah. busy is probably my middle name, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know any different, though. People always say, how, how do you fit it all in? But I've just always done it. I think... Um, if you are a dancer or a cheerleader growing up, you've got to fit everything in. You've got to, you know, like schedule your school work around when you've got training and you've got to, you know, like make sure that everything in your life all fits together so you don't miss practice. So I don't know any different. Yeah. I think this is just my default setting. Yeah. I get bored otherwise. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely understand that. How long have you been doing it then since you were young or? Yeah, I started dancing when I was about four. I actually started with tap dancing. Most kids go in sort of a different route, but for some reason, I don't know. I ended up in tap class and then, you know, you see the ballet class and you want to join in with that because they've got like a little skirt and whatever. And then you see the disco freestyle class and then you join. And before you know it, your mom signed you up for everything. Um, yeah. So I was, no, maybe I was a bit older than that. Maybe I was five, five or six um, and did that for years and years. Just really traditional dance school background, modern jazz, you know, ballet, classical ballet, all that stuff um, until I was about, 18 then I'd done most of my I did some more exams after that but then when I went to uni that was when I found cheer yeah that was when you know like started to diversify a bit and just take some other opportunities I say a lot of people they find it at university don't they yeah so I mean otherwise I don't think I would have ever come across it because where I live now I'm in the Midlands there is some big teams nearby now but when I was younger it just wasn't a thing really yeah um so yeah I don't think I would have ever found cheer if I didn't find it at uni so I'm I'm grateful for that because it has opened up a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't have had. So, yeah. Whereabouts in the Midlands are you based then? I'm in South Staffs. So I'm like right on the border of Shropshire and um, South Staffs. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so pretty central. Yeah. Well, um, so what have you been up to during this lovely time? Well, lockdown was actually hectic because okay. Zoom was amazing I know loads of people hate zoom <laughs> but I actually love zoom I think it's brilliant so I was very lucky to work with loads and loads of teams on zoom I must have worked with like more than 40 different programs around England oh wow Scotland Wales I feel like I've virtually I've been everywhere I've been to all these places that I didn't even know where they were I've had to look them up on the map and learn about the geography of uh, the UK yeah. while I've been zooming around the place so I did loads and loads of zooms and, and lots of private lessons stuff it was amazing loved it um but I then have gone back to work off maternity leave you know in the day as okay, well yeah. so that was just a lot going on like all day and then all night so I just had to like put a halt to zoom which kind of coincided with us going back to normal classes anyway so I mean, the demand was sort of dropping off a bit there because everyone was just so keen to get back in the studio. Yeah. Uh, so Zoom, I think, has, has mainly, we've seen the back of it now. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, so I've just been planning for all the summer workshops. That is just such a big job. I was like, yeah, I can totally just like host some workshops, find a venue, <laughs> check them on. And then yeah. you start thinking about everything that you need to buy and book and, you know, it becomes massive. But um, yeah, so first one is the end of this month so awesome. i'm just in like crazy planning mode at the moment so what what's what's the one at the end of this month then what one are you doing so we're starting in manchester so the first one's at studio 96 in salford yeah. um, and i'll be doing two workshops there one is for under 13s and one's for over 13s that's technique based like one of the things that i found in lockdown is that everyone was stressed about like losing all their technical skills because it's really hard to turn and leap and jump at home I was yeah. in my kitchen, which is, you know, like this wide, kicking things, whacking my arms and stuff. And I think everyone was just getting a bit stressed that when they go back to training, understandably, they're going to need to go into it like at 100 percent action because the season, you know, we've already lost a year and a half. Let's get back into it. So um, I just of the stuff that we're doing over the summer, a lot of the intensives are focused on technique 
like helping people get their strength get their like correct alignment posture get all their skills up to where they want them to be ready for the competition season so yeah. that's the first one um and then the next one after that is that's in manchester the next one after that is birmingham and stafford the following month and then back to manchester um in august and then leeds at the end of the summer so that's oh. five before the end of the summer holiday so we're cramming them in so literally an intensive summer then absolutely yeah <laughs> everything's all on i better be yeah. lovely though wouldn't it to get back to it I cannot wait. One of the things I'm super excited about is I've met these people on Zoom and I've talked to them on Instagram and, you know, like online. We've done classes on Zoom. I've never met them. Yeah. And I can't wait to actually see people in the flesh, in real life, in a studio. Um, yeah. And I, a lot of clubs and teams have gone back, but I don't I don't have a programme, so I don't coach for a team. I work for Team England Adaptive Pom as a coach um, and we haven't gone back yet. So I haven't actually been back in the studio to do any coaching. So I'm like, oh, right. so it is, you, you're buzzing, really like pumped to get into some workshops. That'd be, yeah. that. okay. That'd be awesome. Like, yeah, it's great. Like with them, um, she just said you're a team adaptive pom coach. Like, what have you been doing with those guys? It was really hard. That honestly, like emotionally, was tough on the on the girls on the team because. We were told like year one, world is not happening. No one's traveling. It was too, oh God, I'm terrible with years. Must have been 2020. We didn't we yeah. couldn't go to Worlds. Is that right? Yeah, 20, yeah, 2020. <laughs> so couldn't go, but it was kind of like, this is just a postponement. The world will get back to normal real soon. Let's just all hunker down, you know, like we're going to be fine. And then no one knew it. Yeah. Like, no, or we all struggled with that, didn't we? And then, um, so then luckily, I mean, sport chick, England and Team England have been amazing and it was everybody was rolled over so like no one had lost their opportunity because circumstances are beyond our control we all rolled the team over if they wanted a spot they could continue some people obviously knew that their life was going to change anyway because yeah. they were going to uni leaving uni and said thank you but I'm you know I'm out um, and we were able to take on some new people and we did have like maybe three training sessions which was fab and then lockdown again um, and at that point, I think we all started to realise it's not going to happen again, is it? And then it was going to be virtual, but then we just, we weren't training. I spoke to a lot of other friends around the world from different, you know, national teams, and they were all the same. They were like, we're just actually not training. So virtual is going to be really hard. But I think other countries like Australia, they have had quite a minimal interruption. Yeah. ICU's going to virtual for September, and a lot of them will be able to compete, but yeah, it just became clear that for us it was not an option. And we did loads of Zooms and like even like team building Zooms and just... It's not the same though, is it? Like you can't get... No. It's all, I mean, that style of POM is all about travelling around the floor. It's all about mm. formations, all about that dynamic stuff that makes it so exciting to watch. And you just can't do that unless you're in a studio all together. So we, I mean, they worked really hard and we did our best to make the most out of the situation. But yeah, eventually that plug just had to get pulled we just yeah. had to there's only so much you can do in there and yeah but hard. then like you said it's been rolled over and you can so this that was for last year and then this year it's there's just you know too much time has passed now I haven't seen people for like i don't know nearly like two years since we've had a full full team so we're back we're back to the drawing board really um i'm super happy that like we're still able to all be involved but yeah we've got to go back and you know tryouts will happen again and yeah, really go from scratch. But I think it's time. It's time to do that. We just need to draw a line and everything that's gone on and just move forward from a fresh slate. So, yeah, no, without a doubt, I completely agree with that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Are you, um, are you going to be getting back to judging then when the season comes so. about? Yeah, I've done, I was lucky to actually do some international virtual judging, which was crazy. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I judged a competition in Australia that was able to happen, but because the company um, ATC or Things Cheer is based out of the States, none of them could travel in because of quarantine. Um, so we all sat in our respective homes. So there was a judge in Scotland, there was me in the UK, there was people, you know, in Australia and America. And um, they set up this incredible system. I can't believe how fast they mobilised and got all this done. But all tuning into the whole thing, all working in like Google Docs, all communicating, all on Zoom. Um, wow. And and ran this entire event virtually that was back in oh god i can't remember when it was now the whole time is just blurred <laughs> yeah. into just <laughs> one 
the mass of being at home. It was a good few months ago, but um, they're going to do the same this year, I think. So I'm hoping to be involved again. But it meant going straight through the night, which... Wow. Yeah. But you were a little bit tired afterwards then. I mean, when you get to like 2 a.m. and it's the time for the lyrical section and it's just like power ballad after power ballad, emotional song. It was really tough. No, quick, where's the coffee? Where's the coffee? <laughs> yeah, but that was really good. So I love that, but it will be, oh God, going back to real events. I've been joking that I'm just giving 10 out of 10 for everything. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> you turned up. Well done. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I can't wait. The atmosphere is going to be just incredible isn't it I was going to say what do you reckon like the do you because obviously before people were they were turning up weren't they and they were like watching their routines and supporting their programs and that and there wasn't much other than that they they'd go away wouldn't they if uh, their program wasn't on like it's going to be completely different I hope so because if I've learned anything it is just take every opportunity now don't assume that there's a tomorrow and, you know, I hope that people just enjoy the experience of being at a competition, not because it's a competition, because mm. it's an event. So, you know, like I would, as a competitor, I used to get quite nervous. There's pressure, you know, you want to do well. And I just, I think now if I was going to an event in a couple of weeks, it would be strange because you haven't performed in front of an audience for a long time. But I'd also be like, I'm just going to enjoy this. I'm just going to really, you know, like live my best life, go for it. Don't even care where we place. I just want to dance. I, yeah. just want to hear, I just want to tumble and I hope that everyone just approaches it with that attitude and just because as a judge as well it's so much more enjoyable to watch when you can tell people are actually genuinely having a good time you yeah. can see nerves and like I, oh, I don't want to like freak people out you can tell if people are nervous or if they've made a mistake and they're like get a bit cross with themselves you can sometimes see but if people are like genuinely just loving the routine and just going for it for like it's you get like drawn into it and you get like you enjoy and get involved in their performance so yeah i hope everybody just like really goes for it and just has the best 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 time i can't wait can't uh, it's gonna be i am counting down as well counting down i'm just I bet you've really missed it as well haven't you because you must be super busy like events all the time yeah oh it's been horrendous it's been horrendous like literally that oh uh, when was it 15th of march 2020 sat at an event with like because there were so many teams that pulled out we were sat there around a table like the judges were right next to us so they came over and sat down and we were just chatting and going oh it's all right we'll be back in three months and then yeah what 14 months later still waiting and yeah our diary went dead but then it's literally it has been brilliant on the other end because we've been able to chat to people get to know like the industry even more and build friendships which has been lovely like I've been talking to people in America and then like some of the coaches up in Scotland and yeah it's been a real good laugh and then when I go back or when we go back to these competitions it's going to be yeah it's like seeing your friends that you've never actually met in person 100%. if that makes sense yeah. Absolutely. I've like connected with and, and met and chatted to people that I'd otherwise I don't think I would have, you know, ever built a friendship with or ever really had the opportunity to talk to. But because we all were just stuck at home and like our world kind of shrunk down, didn't it, to social media, internet, you know, yeah. things you could access. Um, in, a, in a lot of ways, it was a, a really good thing. I yeah. know we've all struggled, but yeah, I can definitely. See it, was, it, it was great because like we were able to step back and go because we was full on. Like when the season starts, like it is nonstop, hundred percent all the way. But yeah, he was he was able to step back and go right. Where do we actually want? Where do we want this to go? And how do we want to be known? Kind of thing. And yeah, it's it's been great. Like in that sort of circumstance, financially, it's been horrendous. But <laughs> like, what can you do? You just got to keep going, haven't you? I know you've just got to keep. And I mean, diversification is something that a lot of you know a lot of people have had to do and it yeah I think they say don't they that like boredom breeds creativity like kids should be allowed to get bored because then they'll be you know they develop their brains and I think that's certainly been true for the rest of us as well as adults like I came up with this idea for a business I had no intention of like starting a new business got mm. enough going on but I could just see there was a demand and so many people asking for you know like private lessons coaching all this stuff and I just thought 
I actually, I don't want to start a new business because I'm like, wow, I'm going to go on Dragon's Den and be a millionaire. It was just like, everybody wants to do this. And I would love to get back in the studio and continue all this amazing fun we've had on Zoom. So full steam ahead kind of thing. So it has, I mean, lots of people have started new things, thought, as you say, where do I want my business to go when I reopen? Just having that moment to take stock and makes you think outside the box a little bit. Oh, yeah, without a doubt do things the same way year on year on year because that's what works for us but sometimes you have to stop and go oh is there a better way yeah it's been good it has been good for that reason and I, I i'm fully like empathetic with people who for their business it's been horrendous like the stress financially i know i've spoken to coaches who like week to week like i can't pay the bills to keep my gym open this is you know it's breaking this is it up. has been it's been crazy to like see you've got ones that are they're okay like they've got the landlords that are being like really good in that but then you've got the flip side where the landlords are being horrendous and it's like come on I know. like what but then what can you do it's like you want to help these people but you can't unfortunately you can't pay their bills for them i know but, so I'm, I'm glad everyone seems to be on the road to recovery yeah oh yeah without a doubt it is looking up now and everyone's back in their class isn't they and mm. i mean you've got the competition is just around the corner, really, haven't you? I mean, Bournemouth's just a few weeks away, which yeah. I think everyone's buzzing for. You know, that will just feel like it will be such a milestone mm. in back to normality. We've reviewed cheerleading is back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It will be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Like, what if, um, so obviously you've got your, your workshops coming up and that. Like, what else have you got planned for the future? Um, so I am actually super keen to do some like coaching for a team. So I had a, um, a team in Australia that I had for like five years and I we started really not grassroots level. They've got a bit of experience, but we built up to go into worlds. That was our aim from, you know, like the start of the five year plan um, and became like they were really close knit, amazing bunch of girls program SM cheer and dance. Like I, I can't give enough love for them like I miss them so much because I obviously don't don't have the opportunity to go over there for a holiday or anything at the moment so I kind of plan to you know keep in touch with everybody has been difficult but um so I have just missed that connection and I love it with the Team England program but that you know that's a monthly one and you don't get that you know like there's it's it's a massive entity Team England it's a really really well-oiled machine um, and I've just thought I want to do more. So I'm also going to be doing like a monthly team with um, EX, Entity X Cheer and Dance. So we're doing a POM monthly team. And we are aiming to travel because, again, like take every opportunity. Like let's not waste any time. Let's yeah. get in there and we're going to try and travel internationally. Wherever it might be Europe, might be America, like wherever that might be. Um, so we're, we're actually starting that in like August. So we've got loads of signups for that, which is really good. So that's exciting. Oh yeah, um, and I mean between two thirty intensives, monthly pom team, team England AA pom, judging, I, that's probably going to be all my weekends. You are literally going to be maxed out, aren't you? Book it up, yeah. And I've just I've got some choreography and like private workshops and stuff booked in, but um, yeah, I this weekend actually has been felt normal. Been to the beach, been to the pub, all those things. And we just said last night we were like, God, doesn't it feel busy? Yeah. Doesn't it just feel like the time is flying by? And I, I think we've just forgotten what normality feels like. So I just can't wait to get back stuck into. I'm hoping, I'm holding out for this 21st of June date to really come through for us. Yeah, I'm hoping it will, because we're due back that weekend. So it's because we're up, uh, down in Crawley. Mm. For, so I'm hoping, yeah, it holds out and we can it can go ahead, so fingers crossed no then, i mean it won't be a major setback if it's delayed because it will still happen but we just yeah it's been just like a, a really positive mindset knowing that we're on on the road to normality and i don't want anything to hold us back really i just want us to get back to what we love oh yes so we keep yeah i mean like yeah but if if it happens it happens oh, oh well but yeah it would be nice it would be. oh yes and so like if you could because obviously there has been a few teams or like athletes let's say not teams um that have just walked away from it completely because of the 
they couldn't be bothered with the Zoom or they were they were fed up with it and they were feeling a bit like down. Like what would you say to motivate them and get them back into the gym? Oh, I th- really, you, you've got to do everything that is available to you as an option. And if you've enjoyed something once, now's the time to get back into it because people shouldn't feel like they've had time away and therefore they're behind and stuff because everyone's kind of starting from you know zero here we're all trying to build back up together so it will really help people's self-esteem mental health feeling one of the main things about team sports is feeling connected to others and having those relationships I was writing an article this week about what makes cheerleading so special and when I thought about it I thought I know what I think but I actually just asked my Instagram followers I was like what have you got out of it and every single response there's loads of responses and they, none of them were like I learned to do a back tuck they were all about relationships connections confidence um you know that all those kinds of really important life skills and things that you need a bit of support to achieve we haven't all got great self-esteem as much as we would like to think that we have we haven't all got this in in a confidence that shines through sometimes you need a bit of mentoring you need other people to have you back and build you up and it's hard to get that in normal life in in the workplace in industry you know not everybody is out to support you and is your friend it's a competitive world but when you're on a team on a dance team on a cheer team that environment is designed so that every single person shines, does their best, is supported. You've got a coach there that's like a second parent. They're your mentor. Yeah. They're someone you can rely on. And they do it for the love of it and because they want the best for you. And we all need more of that. And there's not many places you can get it. A lot of other team sports are great for that as well, but they can be quite competitive. I, I have had really good experiences in cheer and dance throughout the years in the all-star industry and it is so so valuable life skills just yeah. don't underestimate it i think is the main message to people just get stuck in take every opportunity financially it has been you know some people have had to stop oh yeah yeah, yeah. understandable that's difficult and that's understandable um but if it's just for the fact of when you get out of a habit, it's hard to get back into it. When I was like probably 13, 14, I remember saying to my mum, like, I don't want to go to dance classes anymore because my friends were all going, you know, shopping on a Saturday, going out, doing whatever. And I felt like I was missing out. And my mum said to me at the time, and I'll be forever thankful for this advice. Don't quit, because if you do quit and you change your mind in a couple of months, you'll find it too hard to go back. And I think I would have at that point, like as a teenager, I would have found it really hard to go back. But on the other side of it now, I can see as a coach that it wouldn't be hard to welcome someone back at all. Mm. Like whatever they're imagining is holding them back from rejoining is in their mind. Everybody else would be there with open arms and just, you know, there's no no skin off anyone's nose, no love lost. It's not a drama. Just come back. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah you'd be welcome with open arms yeah. I think that is that is literally across the board and like everyone I've spoken to exactly the same sort of mentality mm. yeah. it is a real shame I mean there's nothing that you know hindsight and should have would have could have but it is a shame that this situation has forced people to move away sometimes it is just an evaluation and like reflection on your life and being like oh I don't actually miss this very much because I wasn't enjoying it and that's okay don't do something you don't enjoy but if it's just because you couldn't be bothered or you just weren't vibing the zoom you know go back in the oh god I just can't wait get me back in that studio now I'll run around and jump on all the equipment I'll do some parkour I don't know I'll do everything. <laughs> love it love it so like where um so where can people find you to like book onto the workshops and read all the articles that you've been putting out um, so we have a website, which is 230intensives.com. And that's the main place. I mean, everything's there. But um, Instagram at 230intensives, Facebook, 230intensives, um, Twitter, 230intensives, Twitter. all of them, <laughs> all, and TikTok, all of the social medias. Um, and then booking, we do via a different site, which is bookwen.com forward slash 230intensives, just because they 
handle all of that like stuff in the background for me um but yeah the website's the main source of information so it's got descriptions of all the workshops dates times you can get on the mailing list and mailing list customers get like priority booking for the workshops and uh, we've got some more coming up so bristol is happening in october Ooh. and i'm also just confirming things for one in the northeast um cardiff is on the agenda that will be 2022 and um glasgow i i tried to sort glasgow out but because they're still just like they're under it aren't they on the restrict like restrictions lifting now it, nobody wanted to really commit to a um, booking a venue for me which i understand that's fine it's kind of pointless if it's not going to come through to fruition so yeah i'll be getting back onto looking at glasgow can't wait to go oh the scottish pond's insane i can't wait to uh, go. i love glasgow I think I'm, I'm terrible and i have to admit that i've been to glasgow about five times it's the only place in scotland that i've been i need <laughs> to go and travel around and go i'd love to go to edinburgh so i need to yeah. you know get around a bit but i want to do the um oh, what's the route called there's a route basically that takes you all the way around and i'd, I'd love to do that and do I like a little I tour no. well yeah that'd be amazing but like when because we do one at the sec in glasgow I want to basically go there and then do a tour around and do like other competitions and oh, showcases yeah. and all things like that. But then, yeah, go and do the activities on the route as well. Mm. Sounds I'd, good. I'd love to do that. That's a bucket list one for sure, isn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Without a doubt.